Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, or good morning, depending on where you're located. Now, I'm going to make a revised tutorial on installing Homebrew from 4.0 all the way up to the latest and greatest 5.1.0. Now, this also fixes the sleep-wake bug that most people have faced, not being able to put their switch to sleep and then waking it back up. Now what you're going to want to do is have your micro SD card, you're going to take it from your switch, you're going to put it into your computer. You're going to go into your micro SD card, which is where you're going to want to place all, well, most of the necessary files. Now what you're going to do is you're going to download the three files or folders that are in the description. Now the micro SD card files, the homebrew micro SD card files, you're going to copy those. And you're going to paste them on the root of your micro SD card. Now, if you wanted to place a homebrew app or emulator, you would now go within the switch folder that's on your micro SD card. And when you would copy your emulator over, it's usually a .nro file. Now, sometimes it's within a folder with other files and you need to leave it that way. Copy the whole folder. That's what I'm doing in this case into the switch folder. So again, copy the necessary micro SD card files onto your micro SD card, which is formatted usually as FAT32, which works best. Then you go into the switch folder and you can put your emulators in there. That's later on. Now, when it comes to actually launching Homebrew, I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. I'm gonna just copy over one thing onto my micro SD card. This is obviously not something that you have to do this last part. You can do it later on, but anyways, now that you've done that, you will now go into the Tigra RCM GUI and you will also take the payload dot bin file and you will drag it and drop it into the Tigra RCM GUI folder. Now you're going to double click Tigra RCM GUI.exe and you're going to click the folder button and then you're going to designate it as the payload bin. I clicked auto eject. Now when you plug your Nintendo Switch in, for some people, if you don't have the right um, USB files for Windows 10 to recognize it, Zodig will recommend those. Just accept that, install the files and it should launch the payload as long as auto injects clicked or you click inject payload manually yourself either way that you prefer now with your Nintendo switch asleep you're gonna take your switch now I usually do it using this method I got the, the heat sink in there and then on the right side of your Nintendo switch close to the back there's a tenth pin in here you're gonna short that tenth pin out now I do it with this wire I have here I'm gonna try and do it one time on the camera for everybody. Now I'm going to short it out. I'm going to position everything properly and accordingly. I'm going to push the volume up button. I'm going to hold it for a couple of seconds and then I'm going to push the power button and hold them both for a couple of seconds. I just did that. Now I'm in RCM mode. The switch didn't turn on. So again, let's hold the volume up button for a couple of seconds or just for a brief moment and then press and hold the power button and you will enter RCM mode. Now when I plug my switch, my Nintendo switch in, you can hear it be recognized. Zodig sent the payload. Green, that's a good thing. Now I want to remind you always eject your micro SD card properly from your computer. Now I almost forgot to eject my micro SD card and put it in my switch before I actually try to launch into CFW. So make sure you eject your micro SD card and put it into your Nintendo Switch. You can have it in before you actually send the payload. That would be the best bet. I almost forgot and then we would have had a mishap. Now, after you send the payload, you'll see this menu right here. Now this menu here will allow you to launch into CFW. To back up necessary files in case of a brick, 
you have to do this beforehand but in case you're worried you go to tools you back up raw emmc or sorry you dump raw emmc and you also dump emmc boot put those files in a safe place on your computer or on a hard drive and you'll be good to go now once your payload sent all the micro sd card files are on your micro sd card your micro sd card is inserted into your nintendo switch you sent your payload using rcm gui or whatever method you use you can do it for android i will include a link to the app for that now use your volume up and down buttons to navigate see volume up and down well volume down is to go down volume up is to go up and then click the power button to launch firmware and then you're going to go down to cfw now as you're going to see here the nintendo switch should boot up no problem and yes sleep does work so this is also the sleep wake fix for anybody who's wondering sleep does work and wake does work so now as you can see I should be in homebrew go into an emulator SNES ROMs I should have one ROM here, hopefully. Yes, audio does work. Now I can go over Super Mario 3. And good to go. Look at that. Nice to see, isn't it? And you're in homebrew. And I died. <laughs> but that's all good. Because that's not the point of the video. But homebrew is working. So remember to get into homebrew once you've launched all that. Everything I showed you before. You click the album button. And then you would select the homebrew app store. Right there if you want which is going to be included everything else like the Super Nintendo and everything you have to get on your own or follow my tutorials and you won't have to do it all on your own the homebrew app store is working you can find many useful things in there some things are outdated and may not work right away but anyways I hope you guys like subscribe sharing all that good stuff yes I can unplug My USB, I could have unplugged it after I sent the payload. That wouldn't have been a problem. Now also in the background, I can launch a game I have running docked, obviously. Just to show that in dock mode, it does work. We are good to go. No problems there. The homebrew app store. Still loading up. It's the first time loading it. Be patient, it's loading necessary files. You're gonna see there in the background. I do have Mega Man X3 running on Homebrew. And if you don't believe me, I can click the home button and go into the home menu. But as you can see, yeah, I do have the volume off. App Store is still loading. Should be done any minute. So this is Mega Man X3. Running really nice. I'm going to push the home button. And show you. There's your homebrew. Docked. Working. No question about it. All the best, like, subscribe, share, especially share, let people know with that sleep-wake fix. It is very important. Dock mode does work, as you can see here. My Nintendo Switch is docked and running homebrew. Make sure it's docked before you start up your homebrew apps. That's usually the best way to prevent any kind of crashes or anything like that. I am hoping the Switch app store will finish loading on the bottom here, just to show you guys that it does work momentarily there you go it's working the app store opened you can see that down there this game's running up top Chimanlee and Nidus revised tutorial 
and I'm out. Peace.